Hey friends, how you been? Well, it's that time again. It's Thursday and we're doing our typical content. That's right. And uh, well, before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to friend and lanterneer, Mark Stowers. Yes, I've purchased a few good lanterns from him uh, over the past and it's his birthday. So happy birthday, Mark. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So anyway we have something that we're sharing right now right here right, right here right now in the old sullivan manor but we have our star look at this undressed the silver paint is off and it's looking really nice so that's right see it's the same lantern it's a star now yeah, yeah now you're probably saying hey what's all this silver stuff there did you miss a spot no, I didn't miss a spot. Come on now. That there is solder. That's right. Sweated tin, as they used to call it. And, uh, well, since these lanterns came in bare tin, originally they were stamped that way and they were shiny from the factory. But when they were assembling them, they're like, well, hey, you're not going to see it. No, you're not going to see that at all. And uh, so they just sweated it on there they just globbed it on there and then and it, while it was still hot they just kind of spread it around and and just got a little sloppy and it it holds it's you know a little bit more is better than a little less right so there you go but yeah she's a good good looking lantern right i think so not a bad deal from marketplace pretty good pretty neat lantern and uh, apparently has local history so since i picked it up out in san pedro uh it's very possible that it, it kind of lived out there for a long time and might have been originally used out there in the oil industry at some point in time down there in pedro anyways i like it it came out good i didn't go hard on it and i removed the paint and i left a few little areas with a little bit of that silver paint just to wear a little bit of its previous history but anyways it looks really nice and and, and dark you know patina i did put the correct uh, globe in it. It doesn't have the Buell globe in it anymore, but yeah, you can see it. it's got the nice, strong uh, cast Dietz number O tubular globe. And uh, yeah, I like it. It came out really nice. So that's the wrap up, follow up on the star. Yay! <laughs> Anyways, anyway, yeah, what else is going on, right? Well, you saw the thumbnail. And I bought something else, of course, of course. And I've been trying to reduce the amount of things I have. Yes, I sold several over the last month and a half. I did, and they're gone now and uh, they'll never return, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, the struggle's real. real. It, it really is a real struggle, friends. When you're a collector and you just like old stuff and you find something that's a little different than what you already have, you say, hey, I like that. I kind of want it. Not that. Let's get out of here. No? Stupid things. They always get curious. And they're like, oh, what's this big cave? Oh, what's in here? Oh, and then they try and find something to ruin. <laughs> Anyways, well, here it is, friends. DL and SCO, Defiance Lantern and Stamping Company, Rochester, New York. That's right, and this is a recent addition. And I purchased this off of the Tubular Lantern Group. That's right, and member and moderator, or actually, I think he's an admin, but, um, Dustin Lloyd. He's he's been on there for a while and he's got a beautiful collection and he's been reducing a lot of things. He's trying to focus funds and and his attention to other things now, but he's he's selling off a lot of lanterns. And um No, he's still into lanterns. He still is, but <laughs> you know, he's always going to be into lanterns, but once you're in, you're in. But uh anyway, he posted this. I think it was on Sunday. I think Sunday. And I was like, oh my, that's a nice, nice defiance. Untouched, unspoiled, original dark patina, and aged 
dark and solder. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. And so, oh, that's right. It did come with the original globe. I just put a run of the mill globe in there. But uh, here's the globe it came with. See, it's marked. But also see up here, it's cracked. So this will be a display globe. I'm not gonna burn it. It says perfect D-L-N-S-C-O. So this is would be the original globe. But um, I'm not gonna burn it, no. Because it can increase the crack and it could fall apart and I'd cry. So <laughs> with that being said, we did leak test it and it's perfect. The inside of this fount is absolutely bright tin. It's in really good shape. So this thing just sat on a shelf somewhere high out of moisture and darkened, patined it out, and the inside is still a brilliant tin because it was cut off from most air. Yeah, still has an old wick. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll crate this up and we'll light her. Sound good? I think so. Let's just borrow a flame from Mr. Star here. That's right. There we are. Uh, there we go. And I'll just help this down a little bit. There we go. It's a little stiff. But anyways, there we go. Not bad, huh? Nice little flame. Decent little spread. Yeah, this this globe here, it's cracked. It came in a, a CT ham hot blast I got a couple months ago. And, well, Kyle uh, Pagonis has got it now. But I just kept the globe because I knew he didn't want a cracked globe. But... I was like, well, I'll just burn it and see if it falls apart. It's already cracked, so it doesn't have much stress on it. So, whatever. It looks kind of cool. It's, it doesn't seem to be in any, in, you know, intimate danger. So, yeah. Pretty cool lantern, right? I like it. It uh, dates to right around 18... No, not 18, sorry. I misspoke. 1905, 1910, maybe right before the... The larger fuel spout era, so that would be prior to 1910, actually. Uh, but it's a it's a perfect. It says number O perfect, uh, right up there on the front. See? Yeah. And on the back it says Defiance and Lantern and St Defiance Lantern Stamping Company, Rochester, New York. And it's a nice old lantern. It's a really cool piece of Americana, Industrial Revolution. Machine age stuff, you know, it really is. It's a nice old piece. It's just, it just has all, it has all the looks. It really does. I like the age tin, the dark and patina. It just has, it just has the look. And I was happy to get it. And Dustin gave me a really good price on it. He really did. And uh, so I appreciate it. So shout out to Dustin. And uh, thanks again for a really nice old defiance. I appreciate it. And uh, it's been Enjoyed since last night. Yes, absolutely. Burns very well. So this will be going with me when I finally get to go camping. And it's been a struggle to find a weekend I can go camping. Yeah, has been. And there's been, you know, local fires. We've had fires erupt in our mountain ranges. And it hasn't been very conducive to go camping. And a lot of restrictions have been placed on our mountain areas because of the fires so no matter what i want to do <laughs> i can't go camping yeah i can't go camping it doesn't want to let me go camping excuse me so you know i've been wanting to go and it's just like no you're not going there's always something that prevents me from going up there the last time i was up at crystal lake was in May and I just went with a coworker and we just cooked. We just grilled meat, made a fire, grilled meat and had a cigar and a little whiskey and it was really nice. It was, it was, it was a great day. But, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, not an overnight thing. It's just hanging out, cooking and just chilling. You know, it was good. It was good. But anyhow, I might just take the car up there and spend the night in the car regardless. I might just pack a few things for a few meals and uh, throw them in the car and just go up there regardless yeah just hang it I'm going right right who's gonna stop me from doing that I don't know 
But anyways, um, that might that might work. But anyhow, regardless of that, there is something I'm going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. In my last video, I mentioned something about a traveling video. That's right. So next week, a week ago today, in fact, uh, not a week ago today, but a week a week away from today. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't get a lot of sleep and uh, I'm feeling drained. So forgive me. But anyhow, a week from today, I'm going to Tombstone, Arizona. That's right. I'm going with a group of friends and we're going to do authentic cowboy camping. That's right. We're going to do 18 late 70s, early 1880s. Now you're probably thinking, Rob, do you, you don't have any cowboy clothes. You don't have any 18... 80 stuff, do you? No, I don't. Except for a skillet and a couple of lanterns that date that far back. But outfits? No, I don't have any frontier uh, kit. But, 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 we're fixing that. And a good friend of mine who kind of organized this whole annual trip every year in Tombstone, Arizona, uh, he's about my size and he's got a extra stuff and so I went over to his storage facility and we went through stuff and he got me outfitted. So I have a shirt, pants, a hat, and a, a vest and a sack coat and boots. I, got, I practically got everything and I, I need to make a bedroll. I'm going to be sleeping on the ground. Why are you doing this Rob? What is the peel? Why are you going? If you're going to sleep on the ground. Well, I don't know. I think the idea of sleeping around a campfire like you've seen in all the old western shows kind of could be fun. It could be fun. And you're with a bunch of other guys and it'll be fun just to do that. Say you've done it. You've slept on the plains. you slept out on the prairie, right? Outside a tombstone where all the history really happened. There was a lot of things that happened in Tombstone. We all know it. Okay, Corral? Anybody? Right. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fun, and we're going to walk through town and, and hit a saloon, check out some stores, and uh, you know, it'll be fun. It'll be great. It'll, it'll be, I'm looking forward to it. I really am, and it's going to be uh, <laughs> it's going to be a memorable time. And they've done it every year for a good number of years now. I don't know the exact number of years, but they've been doing it for. Uh, five or six years maybe somewhere around there but my friend Justin he's been doing western living history for a lot longer and he did civil war he did a lot of different type of uh, impressions with living history now the old west that's there's something about it you know ever since I was a little kid the old west kind of was fascinating you know uh, learning about the the migration west and all the uh, troubles and tribulations of, of that. Uh, I mean, in my own culture and family, I, I was raised Latter-day Saint, if you would believe it or not. Yeah, I was. But uh, the Mormon pioneers and, and their migration west and settle in uh, Utah and Salt Lake Valley and everything, that kind of, they, they, maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe that had something to, you know, spark that interest. But yeah, history has always been very strong with me has been ever since I was a little kid history has always had a stronghold on me of a fixation if you will and I guess that's probably why I'm surrounded by old stuff <laughs> anyway uh, so it's gonna be fun I'm gonna probably do a prospector type of impression yeah I've got a can a proper tinned canteen on order uh, and I'm going to be getting some proper 1800s utensils for my mess kit. And I got some old enamel wear, granite enamel wear, of course. And that was, that's, that's doable. That was proper for the 1880s. Um, and I have, I have enough of that. And, uh, I'm going to just make a whole little box of my kitchen type of utensils and everything and just make everything kind of compact. Right. And then, uh, you know, got a coffee pot. I'm going to bring coffee. Got to have that. Holy cow, right? Well, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And there's going to be campfires and we're going to be cooking on the fires. And it's going to be just great. It's going to be fantastic. 
I'm looking forward to this. And I love cooking out in the open air, especially in the morning. You get breakfast going, you get the fresh coffee going. And oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. It's just the best thing ever. You know, you think, oh, how good, how good could coffee be if you boil it over a fire? You're going to get all these grinds and stuff. Well, maybe if you don't know what you're doing, you would. Rude. <laughs> yeah, you too. Eh. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> People and cars and horns. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you get out and sell your differences like men? He's honking. Come to blows at a crosswalk outside of a school. That I'd like to see. <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Well, I got, I got granite ware. I got an old cowboy coffee pot. Now that's enough. Cheese. People are trying to make videos out here. You mind? Well, yeah, as I was saying, I got the old granite coffee pot. In fact, I'll show you. Hold on. That's right. Got this. This big old Bertha. Look at this old girl. Look at this big girl. I think I've shared it on the channel before, but look at the girth on this thing. This is, this is a coffee drinker's pot right here. Yeah, this thing <laughs> isn't that beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, this thing, this thing will will hold the coffee for the entire weekend. <laughs> but it's clean. It's really nice. It's a beautiful pot. I've made plenty of coffee in this, and uh, but it's uh, got a beautiful finish on there. I just love the pattern, and every pattern you find of granite ware is a little bit different because. Well, the same method was used, but shoot, you know, it's a beautiful pot. It really is. Um, this is probably later than 1880s, but I'm not going to tell them that. No, um, <laughs> I think I've seen the earlier ones and the lids are usually tinned with a wooden knob on top and the handle is usually um, crimped and curved arched uh, handle, but this has got a grip. This is definitely probably turn of the century to 1920s. Yeah, but it will probably work just fine. I know a few guys are bringing coffee pots, and I think they've been, uh, I think they're tin ones, um, but they're aged, and they look good. They, they'll get the job done. Uh, but yeah, I've made coffee plenty of times, excuse me, in these pots. Yeah, and the whole trick about it is that you boil the water, you add the beans, the grinds. That is, you add, you grind large. You don't, you don't use fine grinds. You grind on the larger side. Okay. Now, with most antique coffee grinders or hand crank coffee grinders, you have a little knob to adjust the the distance between the cones that the the beans fall into the, the two cone plates that grind, that mill your coffee. So you can adjust the size of your grind. You can. That's why the antique grinders are still superior because you can adjust the size of the grind. Now I think maybe most electric grinders, you can adjust what uh, coarseness, but on the antique ones, you can definitely gauge it and you know, looser uh, setting is the plates are a little further apart, so you're going to have a more coarse grind. Uh, and then tighter together, then you're going to have a finer grind. But anyhow, coarser grind, the better with this stuff, because it's going to be boiling, and then you're going to get it to a simmer, and you want it to be simmering. And then as it, after it has a low, slow boil, right? You want it to be boiling, just a rolling boil for about three or four minutes. And then you remove it off the heat, and in a few minutes it will slowly settle to the bottom. So it's six to 10 minutes. Your your coffee is gonna grow, just settle all the way down to the bottom. Now you can sprinkle some cold water. You can take some fresh cold water and, and drizzle it over the top of your coffee and that will help settle the grinds. Now on this thing, you see there's it's got a, a ridge. See these ridges? These, these ridges, well, those are there for a purpose. Those are there to keep your coffee from sliding towards the spout 
So they 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 create a little bit of a, a uh, well, grinds will definitely slide on a, a straight smooth surface, but with those those dips, it, they'll settle in there first before they go out the spout. So yeah, if you know what you're doing, you got that. And also, I have a strainer. <laughs> I got a, an enamel strainer. It's gray enamel metal little round thing with a, a strainer yeah with a little mesh so it, it will actually you know filter out the grinds and i'm going to bring that that's a good idea i gotta i gotta pull that out of my storage out here it's it's probably back there somewhere in my uh, my camping kit anyways that's the trick okay that's the trick to good coffee and you put a little salt in there and once the grinds all settle down you have a beautiful rich robust cup of coffee oh yeah <laughs> so it's just one of those deals it really is it's amazing I love it and uh, I'm looking forward to it it's gonna be a great uh, great trip and be coming back on Sunday and it's gonna be a long drive it's gonna be a seven eight hour drive all the way back from Tombstone back to California here so well it is what it is absolutely now what lantern i'm going to be taking well that's a good question i'm glad you asked it's going to get around to that but um you know i think my blowhole spring top is the one i'm going to choose it's got a really old black paint on it and uh i can put a nondescript globe in it that i wouldn't you know that can i wouldn't say <laughs> if it broke it wouldn't be the end of the world i'll just say that uh, it won't be a marked antique globe. It'll be, well, it'll be an old globe, but it won't be anything extremely special, right? We'll just say that. But anyhow, that's what I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring that in the big coffee pot and my utensils that I'm still waiting to show up. They're, they're on order. They're 1870s, 80s era utensils. A knife and a fork. Um, I got a wooden spoon that I can use for... Uh, mixing beans and coffee or whatever, you know. And then uh, I'm going to bring um, some of my enamel plates, enamel wash basin, and uh, I do have an old tin colander, but I don't know if we need a colander. But I do have some uh, uh, ladles and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm going to bring that. Um, I have a, a couple of tins I can put other things inside. So, yeah, we're just going to get everything all dialed in, you know. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll have to get some towels um, and some linens just for that type of thing, uh, for cleanup and, and washing and everything. So, yeah, it's going to be very authentic. We're not going to be cutting any corners as much as possible. So, you know, um, you know the one of the conversations is, oh, you know, how are we going to do, you know, alcohol? We definitely would like to have a beer around the campfire. And, you know, these guys are going to be sitting there with their cans of Coors and everything. We're like, cans of Coors? Brother, they do sell bottles. You can take the labels off. I mean, you can go to the grocery store and buy a nice beer that has a tall, dark brown bottle. And you could just sweat the labels off. And that will be fine. You can do that. Well, you know, that we're going to be there for a couple nights, and we don't want to do that. Oh, my gosh. You know, well, what if you want a soda? A soda? Go to the saloon. Get a sarsaparilla. I don't know. I know my maybe my commitment level to living the era might be a little different than some. Some people don't want to give up those luxuries of modern things. But me, I can go weekend without certain things. Heck, I don't even drink soda that much anyways. I would just stick with my coffee and water and a little whiskey around the campfire. That's kind of what I'm looking to. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, you know, it's hard for guys. They have this idea of what it's supposed to be like. They want to live like they're in a movie. You know, they want to live as the cowboys did and do all the things, but then they also don't want to go without their, their crutches. And I was uh, talking with a, one of the other guys that might be going, and he was asking if he could bring his laptop. I'm like, well, do they have laptop computers in 1881? I don't know. Did they? Let me think. No, the only Apple products they had in 1881 were baked goods with real apples. 
<laughs> you know, I'm like, are you serious? If you, if I see anyone sitting at a camp table on a laptop in that camp, oh boy, I won't have to say anything. I won't. No, I know that one of the head guys who I'm riding with will definitely have words about that. But anyways, but if you go on to go and get Wi-Fi and sit on your laptop in a saloon, I guess I can't stop you. But you shouldn't be doing that. You should be sitting around having a drink and talking with the guys and swapping stories. That's the idea. That's the that's the appeal. You're living in another time for a couple of days. Just let it go. <laughs> I don't know. I like escapism. I do. And, you know, I guess Tombstone, you, you will have reception. You can text and, and get online out there. And they, there probably will be Wi-Fi within the immediate area but uh that's fine that's cool it's good for social media stuff but i will be making a video i will be making a video so i will definitely be uh be doing that yeah so that was what i was kind of angling at last week when i said i might be taking a trip and filming it so i will do a introduction video before we leave to tombstone with the guys i'm going with and uh i'll have them kind of uh say some things about the weekend and you know we'll do an introduction to tombstone old west camping yes absolutely now there will be iron yeah a lot of guys have iron they won't be loaded but we will have as authentic as a camp as possible and i'm going to be doing prospector stuff so i'll be dressed as a 1880s prospector and there was a lot of those guys out there in tombstone either passing through on their way to california or prospecting in the, the Arizona desert. Anyways, whatever the case is, I'll be looking very 1890s. Now, I, I, I got a little bit of stubble going. I know I won't have a full beard or, or western mustache by next week, but I'm kind of trying to grow it out just so I'm not too clean shaven because that was very rare in that era. So I have to have something, right? So, But after that weekend, it comes off and I'll be uh, squeaky clean again. <laughs> Anyways, ah... Uh, good times well i hope you enjoyed this video i hope that you enjoyed the old defiance that i got from uh member and um and friend dustin Boyd. and uh i i'm definitely enjoying this so dustin if you watch this thanks again buddy it's a really nice lantern and uh we'll uh we'll be getting back to you in a uh, two weeks time at least because next week i'll be on the road be making content and then when i get back then i can assemble everything and do my thing to it and then have it up probably by next th of the following thursday so a week from next thursday i should have a new video up so hang tight if you don't see a new video up next week just know that i'm on the road and go back excuse me go back and watch some old videos of mine catch up there's a lot that was 400 videos at least <laughs> you got a, you got a lot of things to watch anyways have a good one guys and we'll see you again from, tombs from Tombstone. All right. Bye-bye.